Hello, I'm Mark Hughes. Welcome to Disability Viewpoints in our 25th year. My special co-host today is Nikki Villavicencio, and she is a really popular name in the disabled community. She does lots of things, and she's going to tell you about a few of them, and she's going to tell about her guest today also. Welcome to the show, Nikki. Yeah, thanks, Mark. It's so good to be back good here to have you at back. Disability Viewpoints. Right. Uh, you know. I've been a fan and a and a part of this for a long time, and it's it's so good to we be want able you to, to keep going. Come back and and hang out with you all. Um, today, I get the honor to speak to Jennifer Walton. She is the executive director of Advocating Change Together, which is the Center for Disability Leadership, mm -hmm. and their office is just down the street from here, actually, on University Avenue. So it'll be great to talk to her about what. ACT has been up to and their role with did, did they move? Um, nope, just floors, moved floors from good. third floor to first floor. Wow. So now you don't have to take the elevator. So. Well, good for you. Good and for get you. Less You're off. part of that too. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I work well, with them as a disability culture and leadership specialist, you know. Good, good for you. And you've been so. busy at the Capitol. And yep, you know, it's that season of political seasons where they're trying to pass some bills and spend some money. And we want to make sure that they don't forget about people with disabilities up there. So. Well, great. Well, good to have you. Anything else you want to add? No, I don't think so. It's good to be here. Well, great. Hey, uh, my guest is going to be uh, uh, from Light the Wall, and it's a project we're going to tell you about. And it's Yu Wu is going to be my guest, and so we're excited about that. That'll be along in a few minutes, and plus some other nice surprises here on Disability Viewpoints. Thanks for watching, and we'll be right back in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Nikki and I'm here with Jennifer Walton today. So according to Minnesota Compass, over 600,000 people in Minnesota have a disability. The governor has declared July Disability Rights Month two years in a row. Increasingly, people with disabilities are pushing to be more included in every aspect of life. So often we think about the services and supports that people with disabilities need. But what are the other ways people in the, dis in the disability community can be more involved? So today I have the awesome pleasure of introducing Jennifer Walton, Executive Director of Advocating Change Together, the Center for Disability Leadership. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me, Nikki. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about ACT and yourself. Sure, um, I've had the pleasure of working within the disability community for the last 25 years. For most of that, I was on the provider side of the world and fortunately was connected with ACT through years um, at those provider organizations. So I was a little bit familiar with the work of advocacy that, that ACT has been doing for a very long time. And when the outgoing executive director decided to retire, I was fortunate to be part of that small pool of candidates and I am now officially in my uh, second year. I, we've made it one year in this transition. Uh, so very glad to be able to talk about all of the wonderful things that ACT is doing, which I think to your point is really asking and, and searching for what, what else besides services, besides transportation, besides the things that we, we know we know. Um, what are the other ways in which the community and the greater community and the disability community can come together and where can we make change that's really positive and, and impactful. So that's part of what we're doing at ACT and I'm really thrilled to be a part of it. So glad to have the chance to talk with you today. Yeah, thank you. So um, can you tell us a little bit about what ACT does as far as like programming and um, uh, trainings or things that um, that people can get involved in or do yeah. on a regular basis? Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we have no shortage of programming happening at ACT. Uh, we have various offerings. Some are weekly, some are monthly, some are year-long programs. Uh, for example, uh, this morning we had one of our uh, weekly programs, Coffee Chat, which is hosted by two of our self-advocates. And it's really just an hour virtually for folks to come together, chat about what happened over the weekend. I know this morning's big topic of conversation, of course, was the solar eclipse today and some disappointment with our uh, 
cloudy weather. Um, but coffee chat is really just a very social, relaxed time for folks to come together. We do another program weekly on Thursday mornings, Disability Power Day. And the, the premise is similar. It's, it's a virtual offering other than once a month we do get together in person. But it's just an invitation for folks to come together and talk a little bit, kind of get that introduction into what are disability rights? What is disability justice? What is all of this that we're hearing about and talking about? And a way for the group to, to share and, and to get to know each other. So we, we like to use both of those programs as a way for folks to get to know ACT a bit and to learn a little bit more about some of our um, other programming, which includes our Self-Advocacy Academy. Uh, so that's something that we run three trimesters a year, very similar to a typical school schedule. And that is really where we lean into our disability equality training series. And we have um, established a method wherein we have a a facilitator and a co-facilitator who is a self-advocate. And this programming is provided um, throughout the community, ideally in spaces that are not attached to you know, provider organizations. But certainly we understand the dynamics of the staffing crisis that continues and just the difficulty at times in getting groups of folks out and into the community together. Um, but that disability equality training series is something that ACT has, has been developing and, and continues to develop and audit and, you know, uh, reimagine, if you will. Uh, I hate to use the word reimagine in this space too often, right? But um, really ensuring that the programming that we offer at ACT, whether it's Coffee Chat, Disability Power Day, our Self Advocacy uh, Academy, is centered on the voices of individuals with the lived experience. So making sure that our uh, curriculum is really current and relevant and supports that, that centering. Um, we're very fortunate to have an incredible staff and a, and a team at ACT that's able to do that together. And we're really excited about where that's going. And that also then feeds into our Olmstead Academy, which we are currently in, I believe it's our eighth year. So we have the 2024 uh, Olms, Act, Olmsted, Act Olmsted Academy class of 2024 uh, together uh, almost right now. We were together just about two weeks ago and we'll come back together again at the end of May. And this is a program that brings together roughly seven, eight teams of three individuals who will ultimately uh, develop and, um, and organize a, a project in their community. We have teams that may do that independently. We have some teams that are going to work together. Um, and we're looking at really how do we educate self-advocates about not only the ADA, but the Olmstead decision on the Supreme Court level, what that looks like here in Minnesota. And you know, so it involves connecting with uh, our partners over at the Olmstead Implementation Office. We're very closely working with uh, the Governor's Council on Developmental Disabilities. And certainly, you know, m much of our funding is supported through the legislature. So we are incredibly fortunate to be very well supported and connected throughout Minnesota. Um, but that Olmstead Academy is, is sort of a twofold educating self-advocates as well as educating the community. There are uh, too many of us that don't know enough um, and so it's, it's one small part in how we're looking to um, further that empowerment of individuals with disabilities to be leaders in their community, but then also to bring the community in to be a better support. Because again, the ACT, we really believe it is not on the individual with the disability to change, but rather it's on society and systems to change, to be accommodating and inclusive of all people, side by side, together with everybody. Definitely. Yeah. I couldn't agree more on that, um, for sure. And I think what's awesome about the Olmstead Academy, if I'm not mistaken, is it's one of the only programs in the state like that, that delves into the Olmstead decision and then creates integration projects, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, I think what I, I loved about everything you said about the issues that people discuss, whether that's in Coffee Chat or Disability Power Day, is the cultural um, part of the disability community. And I think that is so important as, you know, 
every day goes by, day and day, we have our struggles up and down. Um, it is also important to talk about the things that lift us up yeah. and to make us feel powerful and included in community. And so I think that um, it's so great what ACT does and what we'll do in the future with Olmstead and the implementation office and how we can, um, you know, just continue that community integration is so important. So, um, you know, uh, all those things, you mentioned so many things that I'm sure- more popping up to the top of my mind. So yeah, sorry, we, go ahead, Nikki. No, that's <laughs> fine. I'm sure that, um, you know, people are, if they're trying to write it down, um, they probably have a hard time writing out all the things that you said were um, down because there are a lot. And I know that there's a conference that um, ACT does every year too that people like to get involved in. And I know it's a big, like, fun thing people look forward to all year. Um, so how, what is the best way for people to get a hold of ACT and to get involved? Yeah, um, and we, ACT would not be the organization it is um, at 45 years with, without the volunteer and community support that we have had um, the major difference in my role at ACT, I think, compared to the work that I've done in the provider world is there is just, there's no shortage of people who are saying, how can I help? How can I get involved? Where, where do you need me? So I think probably right now the best way is go to our website, selfadvocacy.org, and you can uh, find information on our entire ACT team. And it's just as simple as emailing us and just reaching out and letting us know if you wanted to be added to a list or if there's you know a specific area that you think you might be able to support us in and we're glad to have that conversation and see how we can move forward awesome and where is your office do you have an office we do have an office we were for many years on the third floor at the griggs midway building so lots of folks know us there we are still at the griggs midway building however we've moved down to the first floor so we are um in suite 177 at the Griggs Midway building and welcome folks to stop in and say hello. Um, again, we really look to create more space where the disability community feels like this is a space to come and just be in community together. So we're working on, on getting there and we're again fortunate to have community partnerships and uh, other individuals representing other organizations who are sharing some space with us. So just continuing to make connections and finding, finding the, good, um, the good roads to take. Yeah. Well, that sounds exciting and I can't wait to what the future holds. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for coming to Disability Viewpoints and talking with us about all the fun things that Advocating Change Together does. If there are other things that you want to ever talk to us about, come on um, back and um, we'll talk to, uh, to about them some more. So thank you and um, back to you, Mark. Hi, I'm Mark Hughes. Welcome to Disability Viewpoints. My special guest today is uh, Wu from Light the Well Project. It's a project that she's just started and they had an event and all those things. She's going to tell us about that. But first, Wu, before we get going, can you tell us, uh, can you start by introducing yourself? We'd love to learn more about you and where you are today. Yes, thank you so much for having me, so Mark. So from beginning to where you are today. Yes, so from beginning, I was born and raised in China. I was trained to be a concert pianist. And when I was in college, I discovered a book called Introduction of Music Therapy. I said, what is music therapy? So I read the book from cover to cover, closed the book, said, this is what I want to do. So ever since, I was looking for opportunities to get into a program of music therapy. And uh, after my study in China finished, I went to Colorado State University to study mm -hmm. music therapy. And the specialty was neologic music therapy. Great. And from there, I just learned more and more about how the brain responds to music. And it's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Learn more about the research and evidence and mm -hmm. the clinical practice. Mm -hmm. What brought me to Minnesota as an internship. So mm -hmm. for everybody who study music therapy, you have to do a six month full-time music therapy internship. And I was doing that in Park Nicollet. 
that brought me from Colorado to Minnesota. Right, uh, right before I finished my internship, I was offered a job at McPhill Center for Music. Which, oh, yeah? Yes, which is uh, one of the nation's largest and it's, oldest it's music It's a leading, school. yeah. Yes, it's really wonderful. So I started to practice music therapy as a uh, board certified music therapist, mm -hmm. met so many people and families, heard their stories. And the starting point of Light in the Well is really getting to know these families, hear their stories, and wanting to tell more people about their stories. And then I met this uh, composer who is really talented portraying the characters through music. So I thought, how cool mm -hmm. would it be if we tell the stories through music? Yeah, so we started working together and create this uh, interview of the featured individuals and their families, just getting a sense what their experience of having a child with disability. Great. And you'll see some video of that later. We'll you know, put that in here. Yeah. Can you tell us about the challenges and lessons you may have learned along the way? Would you say it's been easy or smooth or uh, in re retrospective? Yeah. What would you say? I would uh, say it's quite a ride. It's never would be a smooth, that would be too boring, right? Life is never like that. Right. <laughs> so I would say there's a lot of challenges. The word challenge fits in there, yeah. Yes, so many challenges. As a foreigner studying mm -hmm. in the US, the first time I spent three times doing every single thing than my American peers. Mm -hmm. I spent three times reading, doing the homework, reviewing, mm -hmm. but what is I found is really hopeful is I can find friends. The help is always on the way. I found friends who we studied together. By studying together, basically they were taught me everything from yeah. classroom. Yeah, and I think there's an interest in wanting to be part of what you're doing. Too. Mm -hmm. And so I think you sparked an interest there, and that may have driven some of it. So good for you. Thank you. Tell us about the event, A Day of Hope. What groups were involved, and who was the event actually for? Yes, A Day of Hope is happening. Um, April 21st, it's a Sunday at the Landmark Center in St. Paul. We are having a group of musicians with and without disability perform mm -hmm. an hour long multi-sensory event. And then afterward, we invite all the audience to stay to go through an art gallery. This time we have half of the artists have disabilities. Oh. And it's not only visual art, we also have poetry and poetry. Okay. So how did the audience respond in previous years? And how much uh, newspaper media coverage do you get for yeah. something like this? It takes some of that to really fill the seats, too. That's right, yeah. Um, first of the year, we basically had a lot of people who know those featured individuals mm -hmm. and also who know the work we do for mm -hmm. people with disabilities. They come to the show. We really didn't have uh, a lot of coverage at that point. Mm -hmm. We only had uh, maybe one or two press releases to get people mm -hmm. uh, from McPhail Center for Music. Right. And then uh, we start to build it up. More people heard about us and start to interview us to see what we're doing and why we're doing it. And then we start to get more contraction. Uh, and, uh, and also you've been around a while now. So yes. That helps too. That's right. What was your favorite moment uh, of the event? My favorite moment is really seeing those featured individuals overcome the obstacles just right in front of our eyes through the rehearsal and performance. Uh, for example, I have this one featured individual, Beth. She had a hard time at the end of the first year show because everybody stood up and gave us a, a stand vision. She wasn't ready to be done yet. She started to cry and scream. In music therapy session, we worked on a song. It's individualized, called I Have Many Feelings. So it's about Beth's feeling. How can we cope with those feelings? What are some strategies we can use? After I sing the first two lines, she started to sing with me. So four lines in, right. she changed from screaming and crying to a complete calm down. Do you want to sing a couple lines? I can't sing with you. Do you want to sing a couple lines? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. The song goes like, I have so many Feelings, feelings, feelings. I have so many feelings, feelings, feelings. I will know my feelings. I can manage my feelings. Great, great. 
And so then that person would participate with you then? Yes. And that's encouraged. Mm -hmm. Well, great. So what do you think is next for Light in the Well? Yes, we are actually carrying out different works after this event. We mm -hmm. are trying to work with the school district next mm -hmm. to really offer some music program for post primary school music education. I recently learned after primary school, students with in the special ed program, mm -hmm. they do not have any general music education mm -hmm. anymore. Um, I met this band director. She said sometimes the special ed student would just come in sitting at their practice wanting to listen to music. So Light in the Well would like to collaborate with the school district to create some program right. for special ed students. How about the university? Would you bring it to a college level, University of Minnesota, St. Thomas, Concordia, any of those? Yes, we are always interested in collaborating with uh, you know, higher ed, band, and orchestra if there is opportunity. Great, to do that. great. And how, how may we follow your uh, news? Yes, we have a website, www.lightinthewell.com. Do that again. www.lightinthewell.com. Okay. And people can find us there and find us on social media, just Light in the Well on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Now you have some, oh yeah, you have some videos on YouTube. Too. Yes. Well, good for you. And, and uh, how many years have you been doing it now? We started uh, the first performance in 2021 and okay. uh, became a nonprofit in 2022. Good for you. And so you're, you're moving on and going to keep going. Yes. Well, good for you. What If somebody wants to get involved and not so much get a hold of your website or YouTube, that's nice. But if somebody wants to get involved in the actual production of what you do, what kind of training would you ask them and, and how can they get involved? Yes. And I, what is the best way to go? I think uh, as long as a, a person has a heart to help others, we always you, you want to include them into our program. Some basic training, I think, you just know how to work with those who have an intellectual developmental disability, mm -hmm. how to talk to them and involve them, help them, mm -hmm. calm them down when challenging things happen. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Do you, uh, do you have auditions? How, what, how, so let's say that somebody wanted to really come and be part of your production. Mm -hmm. What are the first steps? And do you have audition? Is that how you do Right it? now we don't. We don't. We are not that big yet okay. to have an audition. But these uh, featured individuals are all through like, places I know. Mm -hmm. I work with them or some groups I had a contact mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. or heard from other people. So ba right now it's a mouth um, word, word of, mouth. of mouth, which yes. is the cheapest, best advertising. That's right. Get. We have a couple minutes left, so I usually do a final word segment, which is just that. And is there anything that you think you want to cover that I might have missed? Yeah, I think what you are doing, this program is doing, is wonderful, Mark. So I we love to hear that. By that's the way. right. Uh, I also want to see there are many people who are not only involved in clinical practice but also research. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my PhD at the University of Minnesota, doing my postdoc right now. I really want to encourage everybody who is watching this program to think about how to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Rather, it's uh, you know that either in clinical practice or in research, how can we make a, a fundamental difference in that, the society? That is very true and words well said. Thank you. Again, uh, uh, you, uh, Wu Yu, thanks for being on our show. And uh, to all of you at home, thanks for watching us. We hope you join us again next time for more Disability Viewpoints. I'm Mark Hughes for Nikki Vil Vincencio and our entire staff here at SPNN. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.
was a quick uh, time today. We covered a lot of ground. I know Nikki had a great interview, and I did too with uh, Light the Wall, and they just had a great event, and we hope they'll stay in touch with us and produce uh, some more videos, which were, that was very good too. And uh, so, Nikki, thanks for being here today. Yeah, thank you, and thank you to my guest, Jennifer. And, you know, don't forget to look up Disability Viewpoints and uh, the organization that I in, I talked about today, Advocating Change Together on social media and um, your online services. Sir, sure, and you can also find Disability Viewpoints on the SPNN website and also on YouTube. So uh, join us there. But join us here in the studio next time for more Disability Viewpoints. I'm Mark Hughes. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.